submit to the Lord. But the choice is yours. Amen? I've been dealing now, and I, I brief you, with second mile. God was challenging me on the second mile. Many people think, we read, Jesus said, if one asks you to walk one mile, walk the second mile. And we think that we are second milers. Let me tell you. I wonder how many Christians are really second milers. That will walk the second mile. And then the Lord started to tell me, we love to greet those who greet us. We love to be good to those who are good to us. We love to invite those to dinner who will also invite us. That's very good. Say to God, he said, that's good. But it's walking only one mile. The second mile guy is minister, ministering at the petrol pump to someone that he does not know, that doesn't speak the same language than he speaks. And not only greet him and say 200 rand, but start to minister to him and ask him, how are you doing? And befriend him and see if he's a Christian, if he's got a need. To walk the second mile is to greet a guy who's a rude, harsh person. Then you're starting to walk the second mile. And then there's the third mile I don't even want to speak because I don't want God to test me on that one. But I can tell you of such. Watch me in a Chinese jail. I can tell you about the man whose father and mother and whole family got killed by terrorists. Who went to jail with his Bible and got permission to go in. And when he went to his father and his mother and his family's murderers, he would open the Bible and minister God's grace to them and lead them to Jesus Christ. But this is not for all, please. This is not for all. Walking the second mile and walking the third mile is your own choice. No one force you and no one will say you're bad if you didn't do it. Because to be angry at your father's murderer, you really got the right to be angry, okay? For sure. I mean, I mean. But people make choices in life where they want to be. And that's also okay. We don't speak about going to heaven or to hell now. We're speaking about Christians that all go to heaven. I mean, now we speak as a born-again Christian. You are a Christian, you're going to heaven. The choices that you make then, where you will be. The Finnish man chose the third mile. For the third miler, nothing is impossible. Nothing. Even the dead can be raised. Second milers among Christians you, is a rare thing to find. I'll prove it to you because I know many Christians. You love to fellowship with the people who are nice and who think like you think. <coughs> hmm? So Jesus is challenging us at least to walk the second mile. Come on, you love to invite the people to dinner that are your friends and likable, huh? That's okay. Say to God, it's good. You see, you get some way makers and other people that follow in that way. You get waymakers, people that make a difference in life and make a path for others to follow. Like the Finnish man. Like Reinhard Bonke. Like Benny. Many others today follow in their path, but they haven't been the waymakers. Many people today do the same things that Reinhard has done, but he was the waymaker. And they follow. You see, there's new, new, new barriers, new spiritual barriers that we need to break. And they are done by third milers. And also second milers. But the big mountains and the big barriers get, bro get broken by third milers. People who are prepared to walk the third mile. And also the second mile. Amen? Where are you now? 
I'll be honest with you, I'm a second miler. I'm not a liar. But I looked around me and found very few other second milers. But Jesus is challenging me on third mile. What is a third miler? It's a person who loves his father's mother. And Lord, don't test me on that when I ask you in Jesus' name, please. Amen. Amen. Test me with other things. Thank you. But I just give you an example. How many Christians say, yeah, the mothers, yeah, hang them. Yeah, no, they, they deserve to be hanged. They deserve to sit in jail. I know. It doesn't mean if you minister to them, they need to not be in jail. If you lead them to Jesus, now all of a sudden must get out of jail. No way. If they murdered someone, they must sit in jail. I mean, but it's not for you to decide. It is for the Lord to decide. I mean, you need to have a heart of getting that person to Jesus and to forgiving and not holding anything against such a person. That is what Jesus said. You say, what? Of a brat, you pass to a rag, we'll say, not break. Dat is okay, jy die recht om so te voel, maar dan sê nie tweede meiler nie, en ook nie derde meiler nie. And you will just remain where you are and who you are. And you will not make a difference in life. Martin Luther was a third meiler. He made a difference. And many others have followed in his way afterwards. The Finnish man was a, all the people there against the wall were third milers. Every one of them were third milers. That's why they did what they did. To the guy who's walking the third mile, nothing is impossible. I mean, say nothing is impossible. Now, please don't be judged if, I, if you think, no, 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 I don't feel like you, Pastor. That's okay. No one expects this. You're going to heaven as well. Don't worry. You're not going to miss heaven. I mean, as a Christian, you make certain decisions. You know, before you become a Christian, you make a decision to become a Christian. And then God empowered your choice. Hallelujah. And then as a Christian, many times in your life, choices is before you. And that makes you great or less great. Amen. Amen. And the one who makes us great is Jesus. But the one who makes choices for Jesus. So two disciples ask him. And they send their mother. And they say, um, Lord, can one of us sit on your right hand and the other one on your left hand when you get into your kingdom? He said to him, you do not know what you ask. Will you drink my cup? They said, yes, Lord, we will drink your cup. Not knowing what they said, Clive. Jesus said, indeed, you will drink my cup. But to sit on my right hand and my left hand is for the Father to decide. I tell you, you will not drink my cup. Because you don't know what cup I'm drinking. No one will drink my cup. And with that, I don't say I will drink Reynard Bonker's cup or your cup. But you will not drink my cup. And if I knew before, and this is the cup I need to drink, I wonder. <laughs> if I would have made the choices, yes, I would. Amen. Give God a hand. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You make your choices. Are you just going to follow others? Or are you going to be a way maker for others? You see, this is the choice you make as a Christian, which will determine your eternity. You say, Pastor, what are you speaking about determine my eternity? We're going to heaven. I know we're going to heaven, but there's a big heaven and it's a long time. And many different positions and functions and so on and so on and so on. I don't want to go and sit still in heaven and look at all the other people enjoying themselves and just say, thank you, Lord, I'm in heaven. It, eternity is a long time, pal. I mean, if you say to a guy, you know, children don't want to learn in school. They say, I just want to get out of school. The quicker, the better. If you, if, if, if you got in your heart to become um, whatever you want, you want to become a scientist, and you are too lazy to study those subjects, when school is done, it's done. You go out, you want to become a scientist, you will not be able to become a scientist the rest of your life. Say to the guy next to you, the rest of your life is a long time. Because you were not prepared to pay the price at school, China. You did not study the right subject. You just wanted to jump out and get out of school, huh? And funk first, huh? (laughs) 
Sonst wird Ecke machen. <lacht> If you want to become a scientist, you need to pay the price to become a scientist. Meaning that you need to study certain, certain subjects, subjects and that the child make a choice to do because in his school days he determined the rest of his life, which is a very long time. Where's the children? I need to preach to them. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Say to the guy next to you, the rest of your life is a long time. Huh? Then you go to university, university if you want to become a scientist. And if you don't succeed in university and you don't make the choices to be committed and to study, you're going to miss it for the rest of your life again. And you're going to turn out to become something else you wanted to be. And that is a big frustration. If you wanted to become a game ranger, and now you need to be a clock, you will be so frustrated. Every day will be a burden to you. Go to work, you think, you wish it's weekend. So you can go to the bush. Because you actually wanted to become a game ranger. Now you're a clock. Tick, 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 tick. Every day is a nightmare for you, and you just wish it's over. Come on, is it not so? Now let me tell you, eternity is exactly the same. Now in this life, as a Christian, you've got time, it's like school. You've got a time to prepare for eternity. A life is a long time. Do you know how long eternity is? Huh? You will not be something else in heaven that you are here. Forget that. What you are here, you will be in heaven. If you've been a second miler on earth, For eternity, you're not going to change it that side. You change nothing that side. What you, what you study here, what you become here, is what you will be for eternity. Okay? Now we're speaking to Christians. I mean, Setergani said, don't worry, you're going to heaven. You want to be a second miler for eternity. That's okay. If you don't even, you want to be only a one miler for eternity. You're not going to change to that side. We make our jokes and say, ah, oh, don't worry, oh, Paul will train you and Peter will train you. No, training is over now. There God will train you in the direction which you have chosen on earth because you will be trained on that side. I mean, to further. I mean, you think, Pastor, you're crazy. That's the truth. You will not be something that side that you are not yet. You determine in this life year what you will be for eternity. And eternity, let me tell you, it's a long time. And it's okay to be in heaven, but if you see others are excelling in heaven, and they're doing awesome things and are close to Jesus, and you're not so close to him, you're going to wish you made better choices on earth. Well, I'm speaking Bible. Book of Daniel is saying this and other places as well. Some will shine like the stars. Others will shine like the moon. Everyone got his own glory. Flesh got its own glory. I'm speaking to Christians. I mean, it's me awesome the services passed. Wednesday, last week, the week before, all these people getting saved. That is awesome. They're going to heaven. I mean. But as a Christian, you make a choice where you will be for eternity. What a frustration if you in this life cannot be, be what you wanted to be as a child because you failed to make the right choices. 